don't know. Maybe this hairdo is too fancy for me to be wearing a t-shirt with. I mean, I, I don't want to look like I'm slumming it. Hey, hi, it's me, Wilma Fingerdo, with the Fingerdo Review of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Star 7 All-Winners Episode 9. Now, before I get started, I do want to thank this week's tipper Do, Chuck Misseldine. How are you, Chuck? And thanks so much. I also want to welcome two new Patreoners to the Fingerdo family. We've got Queen Sue Morris and Princess Inky Blue, which is a coincidence because my drag queen name in high school was Stinky Blue, with blue spelled B-L-E-W. It was the early years. I'm not proud. That's why I didn't get a dick. And finally, I'm not wearing one of my fabulous gowns today. I am wearing Miss Kitty Litter ATX's t-shirt. She has a whole merch page up and running waiting for your dollars uh so you too can have gorgeous outfits like this i love this t-shirt i went for the t-shirt she's got a drinking glass she's got a bunch of stuff and if you follow miss kitty you know that she uh was down she had some health issues and was down for a while and wasn't able to make any money so she's trying to kind of catch up on her bills uh with the release of merch so if you like merch and you like supporting a queen who needs supporting i've got her link for her merch down below in my description box you've heard me now on to the more important things Jorge drink me oh look at this mm, my favorite glass my favorite beverage with extra lemon pucker indeed you brought her you pucker okay let's get to it Roger set a very happy mood in the workroom crowing about her second legendary legend star win as well she should and none of the other queens blamed her for it. Vivi was congratulated for her second legendary legend star win as well. Vivi took their huzzas as a chance to throw some shade at Jinx for keeping her from that legendary legend star earlier with her block. Gotta let things go, just saying. I'm not even sure if Jinx heard her or just didn't have time to react because that's when an obviously dejected Jada entered the workroom. All Roger did was laugh like a big old donkey right in her face. See? It's that Heather attitude. It's on the rise. Watch her. I liked how Jada kept the secret of the plunger alive and even suggested to the room that they don't block Roger so she will never know the secret. Go on, Jada. Trinity called for a legendary legend star tally and it was revealed that even though Jada has three stars, Everyone else has two. Well, everyone except Shay and Monet, who both still only have one each. There's only three weeks left. Could these two queens possibly miss out on the finale? Gasp. The next day, Rue showed up with this week's maxi challenge, which was all about branding. The queens would have to create a viral worthy TikTok dance video to one of Rue's several many songs. Do you think Rue charges Drag Race royalties on her songs? Yeah, me too. As the queens got down to figuring out their personal brand so they could apply it to their individual dances, it was clear that this challenge was going to be easier for some and harder for Evie. Bless. I'm surprised because on paper, I would have said that Evie would be the winner of this challenge hands down because of her body's range of movement. I guess the problem is that her head has to catch up with her body because she's gonna get complaints. Jake's plan was to stuff as many peanut butter sandwiches in her mouth at the same time. Yeah, that seems about right. Rue dropped by for some one-on-one -on -one time or more to the point, production made her. Who knows? One thing that was for certain was Rue's heavy-handed guidance she gave the queens she chatted with. I mean, Rue practically choreographed Monet's dance herself. Clearly, if Monet wants a second legendary legend star, she should do exactly what Rue just told her to do. Have I said too much? On the main stage, Rue wore a stunning silver dress that I'm sure was meant to draw attention away from whatever that was she was trying to pass off as a wig. Seriously, it looks like something that was pulled backwards for a fence. Just me? Joining Michelle and Carson on the judges panel this week was Tony Award winner and Stone Cold Cutie, Ben Platt. Category is What Lies Beneath. 
And I'm not talking in a Harrison Ford, Michelle Pfeiffer kind of way. Have you seen that film? Shay was first in a fabulous blue and white boa cover-up, which she removed to reveal a light blue cover-up, which she removed to reveal a blue satin dress with no backside. So, what lies beneath for Shay is all that ass, as the kids say. Even though the reveals were simple, I gave Shay's booty a finger do. Not like that. I think Jada had the best runway of the night. Each look fell away to reveal the next. She magically went from a winter wonderland to a springtime smocky frock, to a gorgeous green number with matching hat, to an autumnal gown that all added up to a finger do from me. Mostly because smocky frock was the name of my fringe play. <laughs> the Vivi hit the catwalk in a gorgeous, evil, queen, metallic green gown then ditch the skirt for matching leggings and gorgeous sequined boots. So is that it? Just that one look with a modification? One and a half looks. That's what she gave us. I still gave her a finger do. Who would a pinky do? Roger hit the catwalk in an oversized poncho with pink flamingo chapeau and ditched the poncho to reveal a riot of pebbles and color that was a fabulous party dress. Then ditch that to reveal a Venus flytrap themed leotard with pink fluffy gloves, which I totally gave a finger to too because fluffy gloves was my drag queen name in high school. <laughs> Evie shuffled down the runway in what looked like a wooden hobble dress with a hoodie and a mask. She stepped out of the skirt part of the dress to reveal a gossamer gown that was I'm sure meant to represent goo, but didn't really work to reveal her as a what, a gecko? I'm not sure what that leotard was meant to be, but that retractable mask was the star of this look. Still, the mask wasn't big enough for me to give a finger do to, sorry to say. Jinx's runway was another fave of mine. Her classic art theme took us from Lichtenstein to Monet, the artist, not the drag queen. Kudos to Michelle for catching that, by the way. She ditched the water lilies for Warhol and then finished with a Limped reveal, which sounds dirty, but it was fabulous. Four finger dues for Jinx. What, I can't do that? I don't know. I personally think I can. Speaking of Monet, her runway theme was a journey of black empowerment. It started with Harriet Tubman in a long skirt and bodice. Under that, she had a little Black Panther nod with a mini leather trench, which she removed to reveal a long stretch sleeveless sequin sheath dress with the words and we still fight it was a powerful runway with some amazing looks finger dues for monet exchange i didn't say how many i don't know what trinity was wearing but she can kiss a goodbye if dita von Tees ever gets her hands on it i'm just saying first off trinity's makeup was stunning secondly all those flowers she was like a one drag queen rose bowl parade she started off by ditching the hip flowers. I don't know what you call them. Uh, to reveal hip cutouts in the gown. Then, well, she ditched the gown, or at least the skirt part of it. And then, as a final farewell, just before leaving the stage, she ditched her corset. Once I picked my jaw up off the floor, I gave her a well-deserved finger do. Who wouldn't? And then we watched the Queen's dance videos. Shay's dance was hands down the best. I'd be surprised if that wasn't a viral video already, seriously. Jada's dance relied more on comedy and her pre-dance monologue, which was good because she's funny. She just didn't have a very good dance is what I'm saying. I also felt bad for Vivi. It's the first time this season that she wasn't funny. And don't even get me started on that dance, bless her. Roger did a dance based on her name. It was called the Raja, and each letter of her name represented a move or mood for a move. I'm just not sure which it was. Radical radiance, affirmations, joy, and awakening. It was more of a feeling than a movement, if you ask me. Evie's dance challenge video was called The Odd Bod, but I think it should have been called War and Peace because it took her forever to get through it. Seriously, how many steps did it involve? Jinx's peanut butter video was hysterical, but her screaming at her deadbeat son off camera was the best, and her dance was far from the worst, unless, as Roger would say, 
you're some white asthmatic with a peanut allergy. I'm sure she says that with love. RuPaul's choreography was fabulous in Monet's video. <laughs> I agree with Ben. The Monet, Monet, Monet catching on as a dance for when you get paid is a total possibility. Check out the TikToks. Bet it's happening now. Trinity's dance intro was hilarious. Her dance looked like me in a fitting room, but the star of Trinity's show was her new catchphrase. I live! So funny. It's new, isn't it? I mean, she said it before, but not like that. Back in the Untuck Lounge, the Queen's regular gamut of conversation was interrupted with a visit from Ben Platt. It was a very interesting visit because Ben talked about what it was like to be an openly gay actor in Hollywood and what having a working gay actor boyfriend is like. I'm guessing great since Ben's boyfriend did his nails. All the queens got a question in despite Shay's openly flirting with Ben. Back on the main stage, Rue announced that the top two all-stars this week were Jinx Monsoon, but I feel that was more for her comedy than for her actual dance. And Monet Exchange, finally, is what I could almost hear Monet scream. And their lip sync was a spoken word to the legendary Designing Women episode from season one, episode two, The Beauty Contest, featuring Dixie Carter as Julia Sugarbaker telling off a beauty queen for disrespecting her sister Suzanne. It is not only one of the best moments in television history, it actually helped Dixie Carter connect with her character. I know I've committed parts of it to memory, it's right up there with Vita Mita Benjamin. Seriously. I would also like to say, I would love to see more of these spoken word lip syncs. I thought this was so fabulous to watch. Jinx didn't just give it her all. It felt like she was actually channeling Julia Sugarbaker. Monet, on the other hand, was a masterclass in theatrical expression. It was like watching a high-powered lawyer make their closing remarks. Seriously. She was good. So, when the scene was done, I wasn't surprised that it was Monet for the win, the $10,000 tip, and the power to block a queen. And who did she block? Well, shock of shocks, even after all their made-up language nonsense, Monet blocked Roger. It'll be interesting to see Roger's reaction to there not being any secret block plunger nonsense next week. Why not block Jada, I ask? Is no one listening? She's going to win it all, I tell you. So, what do you think? Did Monet block the right queen? Were the right queens in the top? I kind of thought Shay would have been there with Monet. No offense to Jinx. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you'd like to help support my channel, check out the links in my description box for leaving a tip or do, joining the Fingerdo family on Patreon, or getting your own Wilma merch on Redbubble. It's all down below. You heard me. And until next time, miss me! Mwah. Seriously, Martin. I really thought Renee and Shay would have won that. Oh, next week is is a, is a roast. Jinx is the queen of the roasts. Trinity's funny too. Trinity is so funny, and I don't think people think she's funny. But she is very funny. Could be Trinity and Jinx. Raja, I don't know. Raja could absolutely win a, a roast. She's she's just salty enough for a roast, if you ask me. I think she could do it. Monet would do it. I don't know. They're all good, but I think I think it'll be. Trinity, Raja, Jinx, maybe Jada. Jada's clever and she's just been flying under anyone's radar. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Oh, it's all too much. There's only two more episodes left. Oh my God. Oh my God.